Hello everybody, it's Kendra here. Welcome back to this DIY Mom Life. Today I'm going to do my monthly making update where I share with you all of the projects I've been working on. Now most of these things are knitting related. I feel like I've been doing quite a lot of knitting lately um, and so I just wanted to jump in and share with you what I've been up to and I hope you will enjoy seeing my projects. I will do my best to link everything I can down below in the description box but if you have any other questions leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer. So just before we get started, welcome to anyone who is new. If you have never been here before, about once a month I've been posting kind of monthly updates like this one where I share all the projects um, and then in between I post other sorts of sewing tutorials, knitting videos, things like that. So I would encourage you to subscribe if you are interested in seeing more from me in the future. So as many of you know, I have two young kids and I have a third who is expected to be born within the month and so I do anticipate that um, my knitting will decline drastically in the next month or so um, but right now it feels like there's just enough rest time that I'm working through a lot of things so I'm wanting to catch you all up before things change around here um, and also I do have more videos coming up through when the baby will be born um, but more tutorial type videos that I've been able to kind of prepare ahead of time so continue to expect Monday uploads loads from me. So my first finished object for today is my Citadel sweater by Hohi Logatelli. I've been working on this for a while, you've seen it before, um, but it is now a complete. I don't expect you will be able to see the how it looks too well, so I will go ahead and insert a few pictures here. This is a long sweater, a long cardigan. Um, it goes, hits below my bum, it's got some pockets on it. It has a beautiful cabling on it. And I did follow the pattern most of the way. However, I opted not to put buttons on and to extend the collar a little bit. So it's just more of like an overlapping, almost like a cocoon style, just cozy up in it sort of sweater um, rather than like a button up cardigan. This sweater was knit out of wool of the Andes in non-super wash in the worsted weight and I thought I'd let you know it took me 15 balls of the worsted weight in this yarn to complete the sweater. I knit the size extra large, um, probably could have done a large and it would have been fine but again went with the um, extra large and it took the 15 balls. I've really been enjoying wearing this sweater so far. I knit this wanting it to be the sort of thing I could just cozy in. Um, it's been really cold here and I just like to wear cardigans and sweaters all around the house. I like them as a layer. Right now my winter jacket is not really cutting it um, so having a nice thick layer underneath has been really good. Um, I do see a little bit of pilling already, which I'm hoping isn't going to be an issue. I know it's kind of, well, the Andes is known as kind of a workhorse yarn, so I expect it'll be fine and it's not that hard to, you know, give it a shave every now and then or whatever. Um, but I'm hoping it holds up to a lot of wear because I do expect to wear it a lot. I really noticed the difference in warmth wearing this sweater versus the last few I've knit because the last few have all been fingering weight and um, yeah, this is just, it's a lot warmer. And again, that might not be great for everybody if you live in a warmer climate, but it is perfect for here. So I'm really glad to have that project done and be able to use it while it is still cold and needed. So once I finished that up, I went ahead and got started on my Exploration Shawl by Stephen West. In my last update, I had just shown the yarns and my plans for it, but I have completed the shawl this month and I will show it to you here. I really love how this all ended up, how the colors played together in this design. I, if you recall, I have knit one of these in the past, um, but I used a all hand spun and it was all thicker. So it ended up being that this is quite a bit larger. And um, yeah, I just really enjoy how all the colors and everything worked up. I really love making this. I, the sections are small enough, they really keep you interested, um, keep you going between the short row sections here at the top. And then there's a little bit of brioche and some slip stitch sections, some, knit some knits, and then just a tiny bit of lace there at the bottom. Um, and when I started, I was a little bit worried about this darkest color and that it might not match as well. In some spots it looks quite bluish, in some spots it looks quite green, but I think in the end it really did work out 
know how well the colors are reading. I'll try to put in some pictures here too that might show it even better. But this kind of design I find really easy to wear just as a scarf. Um, again, keeping warm is a big deal. <laughs> and so just to wear it as a scarf or to wear it the other way as a shawl is also doable as well. So this one just kind of seemed to fly. Again, those sections just kind of keep you interested, keep you going. And it is knit on a fairly loose gauge and so it does come together pretty quickly. All right, so I thought I'd go through the different colors I used on this shawl from what I can recall at least. Three out of the four are from Knit Crate. And so that is this dark color here, which is the Mallard. And all of these are from the Vitalana line. They have different labels, um, but all the dyes are dyed for Knit Crate basically. This one here, which I believe is Smudge. And what's the other one? This one, bluish color is called Robin's Promise. Then this gray here is Knit Picks Palette. So yeah, that's all the yarns used here. Sorry, there's a lot of light coming from behind. It makes it a little bit harder to see, but that is the combination for my exploration station. So keeping on the finished object train, I knit a couple pairs of kid socks, um, one for each of my kids. These ones here I knit for my two-year-old and these have both been worn so I apologize. I don't think they're too dirty. They've been worn around the house more than anything. Um, but yeah, they are not like freshly blocked or anything of that sort. But we've got this pair here and I knit this with some yarn. This came in a knit crate and this is just some that I dyed and I have a sweater out of this that I use for the heels and toes. I just let him pick out from my little scrap bin what he wanted and went with these. For both the pairs I have been making, I went ahead and did just a rib on the top. This one is a two by one. And I just have found I've really enjoyed wearing and making the socks with the rib and I feel like it just hugs the foot better, especially for growing feet. Like it just, I don't know, I, I feel like they fit better because of it. So I made this little pair here. And then I went and also made a pair for my daughter who is five. And I used, you might recognize this color combination in a cowl I knit for her about two months ago, um, the sock head cowl. And I had enough left, I thought I would make a little pair of socks to go with it. I did the same thing with the rib. This is another two by one rib on starting just after the toe and I kept it up. And then I did a long section of the two by two ribbing at the top. Again, just trying to keep them fitting better um, and fitting longer if possible. And for both of these socks, I did a fish lips kiss heel, which I really like using especially for a contrast heel it's really easy to pop on um but these are the two kid size pairs of socks i made this month so i've also done a little bit of knitting for the baby um baby knits are so quick and easy and fun so i've just had a few things and i've been i don't know it just feels like a good way to use up some little odds and ends of yarn so i did make two little hats thought i would share this one is out of some hand spun i just had a little scrap left i'd used this hand spun in a um in the, my original exploration station shawl. Didn't have too much left, but enough for this little hat. Very simple, just the ribbing and stocking at the top. And of course it can always be rolled up if it needs to, um, to fit smaller. And the second one here, this is also the same yarn I used for these heels and toes that I have a sweater out of. Again, just using up some scraps and things. This little hat pattern um, in navy and same kind of thing. It's very stretchy. It's knit on a really loose gauge again with the knot at the top and the foldable brim. Now the other baby knits, I should say, I've been really looking on Instagram and looking at patterns. And if you're interested in knitting for babies at all, the knitting for all of patterns are so beautiful. Lots of them are more geared toward girls. Um, little dresses and things, little onesies. There's a lot of really, really cute patterns, um, but they are, like they all of course cost money. <laughs> and I haven't purchased any, but I've definitely been oogling them for a while. But I thought for now, um, I would just knit up a few things 
These are both using free patterns and just, again, scraps of yarn. So I made two little um, clothing items. Both of these are fairly small, probably zero to three months size. And I thought I would make one a little more boyish, a little more girlish. We don't know the gender of the baby, um, but I'll probably use them just for newborn pictures either way. Um, and again, I, I don't have a problem putting a girl in blue or a boy in purple or whatever, right? But at the same time, um, I thought for the pictures, it would be nice to have a couple options. The first one being this little pair of overalls. This is using a um, leftover scrap from my knit crate again. I have a pair of socks made out of this yarn and it is very soft. It is a um, merino cashmere nylon blend and I modified a pattern for some footed pants that came up with an overall. So I just used the top and then knit through the body and I only had enough for shorts. So I went with shorts and thought it would be pretty cute for pictures anyways, just with a onesie underneath or um, putting some leggings underneath, something like that. So that was the first little one that I knit up. Second was this one here, and I actually ended up using the leftover purple yarn from my exploration station. I still have quite a, quite a bit left, um, but this is what I made. This is called the We Anna pattern by Tega Hiller Designs. Just a freebie um, in this size, at least the zero to three months. And I did modify it a bit. It was supposed to be a cardigan going all the way down, and I just did the um, neck opening at the top, and it has this little lace pattern on the front. You can see there's a bit of pooling on the bottom half here when um, my rounds changed between being smaller or larger at the top where I had sleeves and smaller at the bottom, but it doesn't bother me. I think it still looks pretty cute here. And this is another Knit Crate yarn here, um, and I will leave my links for Knit Crate down below if you want to check them out. But those are kind of the two baby t outfits I made thinking for pictures would be nice. Alrighty, so those are my finished objects and I do have a few more things in progress right now. I, after finishing the Citadel sweater, just have been wanting to knit more garments and I have a few things planned. I know I've shared in the past, like I have the yarn and pattern already for the May top sweater by Andrea Mowry, but again, wanting to wait until I not largely pregnant to cast that on just to make sure it's going to fit and everything. So I ended up casting on for another Hohi Locatelli pattern. This one is called My Everything. It was released quite a few years ago, um, but I just, I really like the look of it. It has this chunky cable that goes all the way down the back. And then also it goes around the edging, like at the back to the front and the collar, if that makes sense. I'll add another color picture in here to get a better idea. But it's just another open front cardigan. Again, that's what I'm wearing these days. That's kind of what I want to make. And um, I've been working on that quite a bit. It does call for worsted weight yarn. And I ended up picking up some yarn from Holst Garn, which is a Danish company. I'd heard this recommended as a really budget friendly yarn. Um, and it's supposed to be the super soft, which is another line is supposed to be really good for color work. And I had ordered a little bit of that as well, but I had ordered um, this here. Holstgarn. The It comes in 50 gram balls, 287 meters. It is 70% wool and 30% silk. And so it's tides in the seagull colorway is what I'm using for this. And I'm holding it double because it is fingering weight. Again, fingering weight is definitely the cheapest to buy and it just works out pretty well. I don't mind holding it double at all. And I've never really knit with silk before, except for that one pair of socks I showed in January um, with the Silk Merino Nylon Blend. I don't find the yarn scratchy, but I do find it almost more similar to a cotton or a linen than to a bouncy wool. I can just feel it's more structured, which I'm assuming is coming from that silk um, because it is a stronger fiber. But that is what I had decided to use for this. And I made a swatch. I didn't grab it to share with you today and blocked it. And it really puffed up. It looked <laughs> really filled in the look of the swatch. And it, they even say that on the website that their yarns all come with spinning oil on them and so they're expected to bloom quite a bit during washing so 
keep that in mind because I have had a few second thoughts since I cast on my sweater thinking, oh, I don't know, you can really see the stitches right now. Um, and wondering if my gauge was off, which it's not according to my swatch and it seems okay. But again, I think that washing is going to be key on this sweater. So this is a really interesting construction and I have done quite a bit on it already. So let's see if I can hold it in a way that makes sense. So this part here is the back panel with the edging, this being the sleeve hole. This is the center back. So from the center back, I'm picking up on the side and have this front hanging part with this being the sleeve. So if this gives you any idea, we've got, we've got this big chunky cable that's gonna come around the front and then it also has the cable going straight down in the back. So I do still have about half of it to complete there as well as of course doing the sleeves. So that's as far as I've gotten on this sweater. Again, it feels like a pretty good amount, but it really feels like it's flying. I think partially again, holding this double, it does make it more like a worsted weight and it just knits up quicker. Um, and yeah, you can see that big cable that I do think those stitches will fill in when it washes and blooms a little more. It also softens quite a bit. It's not, like I said, not scratchy, but it just becomes a little more drapey, it seemed like, when in the washing process. So I am crossing my fingers that that <laughs> holds true and happens with the full sweater, um, like it did in the swatch. My last work in progress was a new little cast on. I just did this last night. Um, basically, I was hoping for a little break from that wool silk. Like again, it, it's it's nice to work on, but it's not the same as just a really soft merino or a soft wool. Um, so I picked up a little bit of the leftover. Again, this is from Knit Crate and I used it in the Exploration Station shawl. It is the dark mallard colorway that I used there um, and thought I would just cast on for a quick pair of socks. You can see I stuck a progress keeper on here, just a little homemade one to mark the front because I am doing the same thing. I don't know if you'll be able to see there, but I'm doing a three by one rib on the top of this sock and then just of course stocking it on the bottom. And I decided to pull out my nine inch circular needle to give that a try again. I haven't used this in quite a long time and I, I don't know, I had mixed feelings, um, but I, I feel like I could really like it if I practice with it more. So I thought I would pull out a pair of socks to work on just again, TV knitting. I was working on this in the dark last night and so um, wanted to keep that progress keeper on to make sure I could see which side needed the rib stitches. So that's just a really easy kind of project that will be good to pull out um, here and there that's a little easier to carry around than the full sweater that I have on the go. I have that in my little sock bag, which I made a little tutorial for when I sewed it up recently. Um, so you can expect that to come out pretty quickly as well here on my channel. So I also received a, another knit crate. I thought I would just show it here if you're interested. It is in the, <clears throat> it is in the snow stylish colorway. This is the cozy sock, which is, Superwash Merino Nylon Cashmere. And you can see it has these really, um, I don't know, let's see, <laughs> medium length color repeat. So it won't be like a typical striping, but it will create some kind of pooling for sure. I really like these sections that have the speckly bits on them, um, but I do like these jewel tone colors and how they work together. I was thinking because it is nice and soft, I was thinking about knitting maybe like a baby something with it, but I'll just wait on that. No plans for right now. I think it could be really cute for a kid though. This is the pattern of that came to go with this yarn. So you can create these socks with this dye. I don't know that that's what I'm gonna knit. I haven't been as happy with my cashmere blend socks um, just because of the pilling. I feel like I'm pretty hard on socks and I would maybe rather use it for a garment or keep it for a shawl or something. Um, but I still, it's a really cozy soft yarn and the nice thing that it, even though it is the sock 
membership crate. It does go, I mean, you can use it as any kind of fingering weight yarn that you want. As you can tell by all these baby knits and shawl knits. <laughs> I also did a little revamp to a previous box. Um, this is the compact colorway. I don't, I will try to put in a picture of the before. Originally it was a, there was two tones of green for the main part of the sock and then the heels, toes and cuffs. And I just wasn't super thrilled with the tone of it. Um, so I added in a little bit of blue and got this really interesting green color. Oh well, you can see it in here, but it really just had a quick little dip in the dye bath and I think I will get a lot more use out of it now just at this, with these colors included. I was also thinking how these two together might make something really pretty or interesting. Anyways, just a little refresh again. I don't see any of this yarn going to waste, but it is kind of the gamble of having a subscription box that you may like some months more than others, and you may like my may like some more um, for socks than others. I like knitting the speckled and highly variegated colors for socks, um, just because they're fun and they're, I don't know, to me they don't call me for knitting garments or shawls quite the same, um, and I like to keep those crazy colors for the socks. So I've also done some spinning this month. I haven't done spinning in probably almost a year, uh, but I had one bag of fiber left that I was really looking forward to dyeing, and I just released a video um, dyeing the fiber. So if you wanna go check that out, I will link it. And this is the yarn I ended up with. It's all these different blue tones. There's some purplish shades and going into the deeper charcoal. In the roving, it looked so much more contrasted than it does um, all spun up. And I think that's something I'm finding is happening more and more. It just seems to be the way that it goes. Even if it looks really contrasty, it all just kind of becomes a lot more muted as it gets spun. You can see it here. I'm pretty happy with the spin. Again, if you are new here, I am feel like a very much novice spinner. I picked up a spinning wheel on Kijiji, which is like Craigslist, a while ago. Um, and it was someone's like grandmother's that they brought over to Canada during World War II. There's no markings on it as to who the maker is. It's old, it needed a few little repairs and I just did my best to get it going. And it's been working just fine for me. Um, but it's just kind of me trying to figure things out. Um, definitely not a professional or anything else. It's just been really fun to try it out. I haven't even measured the yardage on this yet, um, but it is 100% merino. It's very, very soft, and I know I will be able to use it for something. Then the last half of the yarn I dyed, I just finished. It hasn't even been washed yet, so I haven't set the twist or anything like that. Um, but I thought I'd share with it, share it with you right now. I literally took it off my sewing, off my spinning wheel this morning. Um, and it's different than my usual. Normally I stick to these blues, greens, purples, things like that. And I went for lots of these um, burgundies and it's almost more mustardy tones. And I went with some deeper shades in there as well. But kind of like with the blue, it all muted a lot more than I thought it would in spinning it. And uh, this is what I ended up with. I am happy with it. I think I like it even better being a little more muted like this than being all the really wild tones. I'm even thinking these two together might be really interesting. So if you have any good ideas of ways to use hand spun um, and mixing colors, things like that, I was thinking maybe some kind of shawl thing. I don't know. They might not get joined together, um, but for now they are. But for now, I'm just thinking through my ideas of what might work well. So after this, I'm gonna go wash this and set it. But yeah, I'm really, really happy and I really wanna keep spinning and I'm disappointed I'm out of fiber. I will see what happens if I get to pick some up or what with that. Um, but at the same time, I'm glad to have worked these all the way to completion. I really hate seeing things partially done and just sitting on the spinning wheel not being finished. 
All right, so I think that is all I have to share with you today. I have had so much fun making things this month and thank you so much for checking it out. Um, I would love to talk about any of these projects. If you have any questions, if you've tried any of them, if you're getting on the spinning train right now, let me know. I'd love to chat with you down below. And yeah, I will try to my best to keep up with these episodes as being like a monthly kind of update. It seems to work a little better for me than trying to do them more regularly and then mixing them in with some of the more um, tutorials or other sorts of videos um, in between. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!